Tekrar hoş geldiniz sevgili seyirciler. Welcome back our dear viewers. You are back to I am learning Turkish with me, Anastasia Krenichenko. In the first part of our program, we learned dative case in Turkish, which is amazing and really nice. In this part of the program, we will go on with this case and one mysterious theme, which I told you about in the first part before leaving for break. Let's go. Let's not miss time. So, uh, we are using with dative case all verbs, which include vermek word. Vermek means to give. Let's see in which context can we use it. Sen onlara ders veriyorsun. Sen onlara ders veriyorsun. You are giving them lessons. Size söz veriyorum. Böyle bir şey artık yapmıyorum. Size söz veriyorum. Böyle bir şey artık yapmıyorum. I'm giving you a word. I'm never doing such thing again. İshan gazeteye haber verdi. Gazeteciler yarın o eve geliyorlar. İshan gazeteye haber verdi. Gazeteciler yarın o eve geliyorlar. İshan let the newspaper know about it. The journalists are coming to that house tomorrow. So you see, it's all to give, but it's all not physical give as well. But of course we can just say ona elma veriyorum. I am giving him an apple. And it will be right with dative case as well. Also, we have binmek. Binmek. To get on something, like transportation, or to ride. İşe gitmek için otobüse binmiyorsunuz. Bisiklete biniyorsunuz. İşe gitmek için otobüse binmiyorsunuz. Bisiklete biniyorsunuz. To go to work, you are not getting on bus, you are riding bike. So you see, it's really uh, nice because we are using one verb in two meanings. In the same sentence, actually. We also have atmak. Atmak. To throw. Öğrenciler kutuya çöp atıyorlar. Öğrenciler kutuya çöp atıyorlar. Students are throwing trash to the box. Yeah, like chop means trash, by the way. Also, we have some important verbs uh, as inanmak. Inanmak, to believe. Sana inanıyorum, sen kötü bir şey yapmıyorsun. Sana inanıyorum, sen kötü bir şey yapmıyorsun. I believe you. You're not doing something bad. Also, göstermek. Göstermek. To show. Anneme Türkiye'yi gösteriyorum. Burası çok güzel bir yer. Anneme Türkiye'yi gösteriyorum. Burası çok güzel bir yer. I'm showing my mom Turkey. Here is very beautiful. Also, sormak. Sormak. To ask. As an example. Öğretmene soru soruyorum ama öğretmen bana cevap vermiyor. What a common thing on classes, isn't it? Öğretmene soru soruyorum ama öğretmen bana cevap vermiyor. I'm asking teacher a question, but she is not answering me. But you can ask me anything and I will give you. But you can ask me anything and I will uh, answer you. But if you ask it, on YouTube in comment section of this program. And last but not the least, verbs. We have söylemek and demek. Söylemek, demek, which mean to say. Siz bana ne diyorsunuz? Noel Baba gerçek değil mi? Siz bana ne diyorsunuz? Noel Baba gerçek değil mi? What are you saying to me? Isn't Santa real? Oh yeah, like it was a real tragedy for me when I was a little child. Anlatmak, anlatmak means 
to tell. Babaya her şey anlatıyor. Artık ona bir şey anlatmıyorum. Babaya her şey anlatıyor. Artık ona bir şey anlatmıyorum. He is telling dad everything. I'm not telling him anything anymore. And yes, uh, let's go to our really mysterious theme. We have a consonant harmony. We already know one harmony of consonants, which says that if our uh, word is finishing with f, s, t, k, ch, sh, h, p, we need to add an affix which starts with a voiceless consonant. But this one is a bit different. If the word's last letter is k, t, ch, p, and it is accepting an affix which starts with a vowel, which is dative case, by the way, those letters are changing to g or yumushak g, d, j, and b. Let's see how is it happening. As an example, we have a word rank, and we are adding dative to it. We are getting rang in the end. Yurt, and we see it is finishing with t. So we are having yorda. Arch is finishing with ch. Is it in the list? Yes. So we are getting aja when we add dative to it. Kalp, which means heart is finishing with p. So we are having kalbe when we are adding dative. Just notice that this harmony is mainly for only making your speech more fluent. Uh, if you don't use it, Turks will still understand you most of the times, okay, not every time. Uh, it doesn't have a major effect on understandability. So, if you forget about it, don't worry, relax, take a brief, nothing will happen actually. But still, we needed to understand what is written in Turkish, because it's pretty not rare. Uh, the name of this kind of the consonant harmony is the ketchup rule. Why ketchup? Because ketchup word includes all those consonants which are making some troubles for us. So our cat chop is happening g, yumuşak g, d, j, b. Most of Turkish teachers are saying here, uh, the cat chop rule is irregular. Just try to memorize each word which is getting voiced. But, but it's not me. We are here in I am learning Turkish really professionals. So I am telling you that there are some rules which I will uh, discover for you. First of all, ketchup rule is mostly not working in the words with only one syllable. As an example, at, at, which means meat, is becoming at, not Ede. Kök, kök, which is root, is becoming köke. K is not changing. Göç, which means migration, is göçe, not göce. Kaç, which means how much, is not kaca, it's kaça. Sometimes the rule is not working because it n helps us not to mix two words. As an example, such in Turkish means hair, but saj in Turkish means tin plate. So if we say saja for hair, we will not understand what do we mean. So such, sacha, to hair, saj, Saja to the tin plate. Is it understandable? Yes, of course. Let's move on. 
Of course, in this rule, we still have exceptions. We have, for example, a word guch, which means power, and having guje, not guche. Yes, it is happening in Turkish. We also have gök, sky, and it's becoming göe, not göke. But some Turks actually don't know it, so you can just use it as göke as well. They will not notice. Cup means container, and if you want to say to container, you are telling kaba, not kapa. But uh, there are not too much exceptions from this particular little rule. So just be relaxed most of the time. One syllable means no changes. Then words with two and more syllables, there in the end, there is one vowel, and after that, k, t, ch, or p, are mostly following ketchup rule. In those situations, k becomes yumushak ge. As an example, kitab, kitab, which means book, becomes kitaba, to the book. Aj, which means tree, becomes aja, to the tree. Kaut, kaut, paper, becomes kauda, to the paper. And çocuk, çocuk, which means child, we actually know this word, it becomes çocuğa, to the child. But uh, rule is mostly not working if the word is a loan word. Let's see. As an example, we have devlet, which means state, and it becomes devlete, not devlede with dative case. It is borrowed from Arabic. Avocat, avocat. Yeah, it seems like avocado, but it is actually an advocate, becomes avocata, not avocada. This word is borrowed from European languages. Hukuk, hukuk, which means law, becomes hukuka, not hukua. It is also borrowed from Arabic as well as sanat, sanat, art. It was sanata, not sanada. But still, some Turks still make those kind of mistakes. So, just feel free. Don't be too stressed by this theme. And then, if there is er, an or l, and after that, ke, te, che, or pe, in the very end of the word. Ketchup rule is mostly working. In these situations, ke becomes ge. It can't be yumushak ge, because yumushak be, sorry, yumushak ge is following a vowel. Let's see. We have yogurt, which is yogurt. It becomes yorda. Renk, which is color. It becomes renge. Genç, which means young, but it can be also a young person, becomes a gece. Gence. Kalp, which means heart, becomes kalbe, to heart. So you see, still logic is not forgotten. But for sure, this rule may not work with loan words. As an example, park, we all know what does it mean. Park, obviously, becomes parka, not parga. Stand, which is stand for heart, you know, it's a medical term, becomes stante not stande. And cart, 
which is card, <laughs> becomes carta, not carda. And also one important word here is Turk, Turkish, which is Türke, to Turk. It's not changing as well, but mostly because it is a personal name of a whole nation. Uh, by the way, what about personal names? K, P, Ç or P in the end of those names are changing only in pronunciation, but they are not changing when we are writing them. Because what? Because personal names can't change. As an example, we have Ahmed, and we want to say Ahmed plus E. It is Ahmed te when we write it, but Ahmed -e when we pronounce it. Isvech, Isvech, which means Sweden, will be Isvege, but will be written as you see on your ecrans. Sinop, Sinop is a little city in Turkey on the Black Sea region. We will say Sinopa. No. We will say Sinoba, but write Sinopa. So, yes, actually, it is kind of end of this theme. How can we learn whether this word is uh, getting voiced consonant in the end or not? If uh, we see at, as an example, plus uh, in brackets, we see like the same consonant, it means that it is not following this catch-up rule. But if we see, as an example, Arab word, and the consonant in the brackets is different, it is voiced, it means that this particular word is following the rule. So yes, it was super easy, barely an inconvenience. Actually, not so easy, but still, it will be really fun if then you learn it. Let's train. Uh, we need to guess if the K, T, Ch, P in the end of some words in this text is changing or not. Burası bir sınıf. Burada her öğrenci bir şey yapıyor. Ben kitap A yazı yazıyorum. Aleyna saç A toka takıyor. Mert kağıt A bakıyor. Uğur derslerden sonra park A gitmek istiyor. Osman sandviç yiyor. Çünkü bu yemek e bayılıyor. Şimdi pencereye bakıyorum. Dışarıda kedi ağaç a tırmanıyor. So yes, let's guess. And I will not make you wait too long. And we will see how is it happening. Burası bir sınıf. Burada her öğrenci bir şey yapıyor. Ben kitaba yazı yazıyorum. See, kitap becomes kitaba. Aleyna saça toka takıyor. See, saça is not saca because such word has only one syllable. Mert kağıda bakıyor. Uğur derslerden sonra parka gitmek istiyor. You see, it's not parga because park is loan word. Osman sandviç yiyor çünkü bu yemeğe bayılıyor. Şimdi pencereye bakıyorum. Dışarıda kedi ağaca tırmanıyor. Yes, let's read it in Turkish tempo. Burası bir sınıf. Burada her öğrenci bir şey yapıyor. 
Ben kitaba yazı yazıyorum. Aleyna saça tokat okuyor. Mert kağıda bakıyor. Uğur derslerden sonra parka gitmek istiyor. Osman sandviç yiyor çünkü bu yemeğe bayılıyor. Şimdi pencereye bakıyorum. Dışarıda kedi ağaca tırmanıyor. Yes, good for us. And now we are finishing our nice lesson. So let's review what did you learn today. Today we learned a dative case and a consonant harmony, which are most important themes in Turkish by now. In our next lesson, we will uh, review emotional vocabulary. We will tell emotions in Turkish. I, Anastasia Krenichenko, was your Turkish teacher today as always. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube and Instagram and of course comment on YouTube videos. See you soon. It was NTR TV. I am learning Turkish.